this is a, you know, the way things have, that have happened, the way things that, how things have happened in my life, you know, are, I guess that they haven't been scripted, but they, they were scripted for me. Um, while I was in Iraq, I, I kept a little journal, because um, no one really talks to each other out there when, when about the bad things that happened. Um, I, I, I was telling the, the lady that, you know, um, it doesn't matter how decorated you, you get or how many medals and stuff, because you don't feel like uh, you, you don't feel like you deserve it because you're, you're so scared. And, and you know, if, if, you know, we all say, you know, if, little, if they only knew you know, that I was maybe peeing or crapping on myself at the same time, for lack of a better term, you know, when you guys said that I did all these great things. Um, well, that's the same way I feel about the book. I don't, I don't think I did anything particularly special. Um, uh, anyone else would have done the same thing in my situation. Um, and uh, you don't have time to think about that when you're out there. You just, you know, you, uh, you're there to, to do a job and you have a bond with the people that you are and, and you feel obligated to do the best job that you can. Um, and uh, sometimes people live, sometimes they don't. The, the words in the book, some, some of them are a little bit, uh, I'll omit some of the um, graphic nature if you guys want, or if, if, I mean, you know, you, you can read it anyway, but um, I'll, uh, I'll begin. And uh, like I said, this is, I've never read it, so this will be my first time, so uh, it's a, uh, Okay, it's titled Killed in Action um, because uh, I, our unit, I was attached, I was a pharmacy tech. I, I went, I came, I came in the Navy as a interpreter and I had a bunch of credit cards in college that I just didn't quite pay on time. So I lost my clearance as an interpreter and I was offered uh, corner school. And then I went to pharmacy tech school to avoid going with the Marines. So when I got the class for pharmacy tech, they said, well, um, you won't have to go to the Marines, but you have to take the training in order to go to pharmacy tech school. And I said, okay. They said, but don't worry about it. That's, you know, that was back in Vietnam. You won't, you won't have to do that. So I went to surgical shock school, and I uh, did the training back in 97, 98, and uh, was working in the pharmacy my whole career. Uh, I was stationed in California. And I, actually, I was in Guam when the war when we attacked, and I working at a pharmacy. And I said, "Man, I want to." You know, my buddies are out there. I was in a Marine base my whole career. So upon getting to being stationed in Camp Pendleton in 03, 04, uh, my chief said, "Hey, look, Rod, they're gonna take all the corpsmen that have that designator, and they're gonna send them with the Marines." So again, I said, "Okay, well, I can probably get out of this one." He says, "But look, if you..." volunteer, you'll go with a support unit and you'll be in the back. And I said, all right, you know, cool. So I, I volunteered for that. And I took these big pharmacy drug facts comparison books with me. And I get to Iraq. They, uh, you know, they're like, okay, Rod, you're, you know, you're 84-4. And they, they attach me with this unit, which, you know, goes on medevacs and they go doing patrols and stuff. And they set up um, I said, no, I'm here to do pharmacy. And they said, no, you're, you have the designator, you know, here. This is what we're going to use you for. So um, I guess I, I said, okay, all right, you know, um, that's fine. But I didn't know how important it was that I, I should have, uh, you know, when, when someone dies on you and you haven't been doing this kind of stuff, um, and I remind you, in, in 2004, none of our superiors have been in war. They, you know, the, most of the guys in Vietnam, their superiors have been in Korea. So, you know, they can look up for um, guidance. We, we, so, we, we, we can have that. So, uh, I'll begin here. Let me, uh, uh, Paul Rodriguez, I was attached to the uh, 1st Marine Division. Uh, Naval Hospital Coleman, uh, and I was in Fallujah, and I was in the Jaff, Iraq. Um, 
and it begins, uh, we're sort of honorary Marines. They call us corpsmen, we're combat corpsmen, combat medics, but we're known as docs. That's our nickname. I had two brothers who were in the Marine Corps, and I had several uncles who were in the Marines and the Army. Some who served in Korea, some who served in Vietnam, and it was sort of a family legacy. I did go to college, but it is sort of a family legacy to join the armed forces and serve your country. I lost a family friend, like a cousin of me, in the World Trade Center attack. He was a police officer there. He died saving people. He was able to, thank God, save a couple of people before he passed away, and he probably wouldn't have had it any other way than that. My sister also was working in Tower One. She made it out. She got trampled over, but she made it out alive, thank God. My brother had an office in Tower Two, and was stuck in a train on his way to a meeting there. I'm from New York City, but I was already in the service at this time. I didn't join because of that. I'm a pharmacy technician in the Navy. Before that, I had to go to corpsman school, and I had to go to FMSS school, which is Field Medical Service School, which is sort of like a surgical shock trauma training program for the docs when we serve with the Marines. I was working in the pharmacy at the time when 9-11 happened. I didn't really foresee actually being in combat, although I did want to go out there and do my part when 9-11 happened, because naturally it's pretty frustrating and pretty upsetting to see what happened. Before I went to Iraq, I was pretty outgoing, a little bit selfish, maybe still am, but I was involved in different sports, from football to swimming, powerlifting, boating, I love deep sea fishing, I did everything. I enjoyed having a drink on occasion, hitting the normal bars and night scene, and I loved women. I, I, I was very confident. Like I said, I haven't read this. I was very confident. I was sure I was ready for Iraq and for war. I grew up in a pretty tough neighborhood in New York City, Spanish Harlem. There was lots of violence and a lot of robberies, a lot of homicides. I said, man, if I could deal with this in New York, I could definitely deal with that in Iraq. I knew what people told me and what I saw on television, but it's a whole different story when it's really happening to you. It's not like that suspense when you're in line to get into a roller coaster at Six Flags and you finally get on it and there's no turning back now. Because even then you can still get off the roller coaster. You can still tell the operator, hey, I don't want to ride this roller coaster right now, I want to get off. You still have a chance to get off. On our first approach, although we were getting shot while we were coming in, the plane was getting shot at by a rocket propelled grenade, or RPG. It, is still kind of, it still kind of felt fun, because we were in this big plane, C, uh, C5, and you're not really comprehending it. And it's doing all these kind of maneuvers. Well, uh, I still felt like it's sunny over here. It's a different place, and it's Mesopotamia, the beginning of life. Sort of exciting, you know? But it all changes once you see your first bloodshed, your first dead body. He was probably in his late 30s. He was a staff sergeant. He left some kids behind and his head was blown off. There was a truck filled with explosives. There was a fruit truck full of explosives and it blew up two convoys, a Marine convoy and an Army convoy. I ran up to the helicopter. The call came on the radio, fire striker. We have multiple casualties inbound. I think there were like four insurgent, four urgent surgicals, three urgents, and a couple walking wounded. And they were all going to different places. We weren't sure which was going to come to us. We got somewhere around five or six of them. You kind of lose focus on who else is coming in, and you just kind of keep focus on your casualty, on who you're going to be in charge of.